if none of the parts are selected I can use the arrow keys to go up and down in my track list as well. So now the drum track is selected I could do settings on the drum editor for example, sorry on the on the inspector on the left hand side and now if I press the arrow key so I go down to the bass track the inspector for the bass track becomes active and I can make changes in that inspector for the bass part or for the bass track. Another way of bringing the cursor back to the very beginning of the arrangement is by pressing the home key. The home key brings the cursor back straight away and if you hit the 9 key the cursor moves back to the last stop position. I'll do this one again I'll start the song, I'll hit stop, and now I'll move the cursor, now I do a fast forward, I press 9 on the number pad to go back to the last stop position, I could then use this to, let's say I press, um, I want to check, check a certain part, let's say I want to check the ending of these, um, these three parts, I want to hear that again. do this by hitting the 9 key and again and if I'm finished with this I'll press the home key and the song starts from the very beginning if you press shift and 1 for example the left locator moves to where the position of the song is at that time. So I'll move the position of the song up, the cursor, and I'll press shift 2 on the number pad of course, and the right locator moves to where the cursor is. Let's move the right locator to where the cursor is now, and here I've got a slightly different loop which I've set up. If I play the loop, I press 1 for the cursor to go to the locator. just made the locators go to wherever the cursor was at that particular time. But if the cursor is at a special place in the music, let's say the cursor is at the beginning of a certain bar, let's say you hit um, P and you type in 9, so the cursor is at the beginning of bar number 9, if that was the case you can then easily quick, uh, quickly press Shift 1 for the left locator to go to that position and let's say the um, cursor was at the beginning of bar 13. By the way, I'm pressing the P button to bring up the position on the transport bar. And then I just type in 13. You don't need to type in all of these numbers unless you want to send the cursor to a different position. Let's say you want to go to, you want to go for bar, uh, sorry, beat 2 and the third 16th node. Then 13, bar 13, beat 2, third 16th node comes up in the position. But if you just want to move from bar to bar, you just press the, third, the, the P key and then type in the new band number which is 13, hit return and the cursor is there. And if you then want to move the right locator to that position you just hit shift and the 2 on the number pad and the right locator moves to that position. Another quick way of setting up a loop is, especially if you've already got a part selected. I'll select a part by using the arrow keys down here. And I'll select this part here, the first bass part in bar number 9. And um, in order to, to move the locators around this part, I'll press Alt and P on the keyboard at the same time. I'll do this again for another position. I'll have, some, I'll have a part selected, maybe even a few parts, like this. And all I need to do is, is press Alt and P at the same time for, the, for both locators to move around those two parts or those four parts at the moment. So um, I'll show you what you can do with this. You could then, I'm going back to bar number nine again. I'll hit Alt P for the cursor to go around the part. I'll delete the part which is selected at the moment because I want to re record the bass part. I'll, I'll switch on my loop. You can hear the music without the bass.
you've seen that, I haven't pressed record. Now I'll do it. I'll switch record off again. And I'd like to keep this bass part for the next um, eight bars. So I'll select the following one, keep shift pressed, use my arrow key to select the other three as well. Delete those. Select that one with the arrow keys. Hit Ctrl K. Type in three. And I've got a new bass part. If I then switch the loop off, you can hear that this same bass part carries on through the next few bars. Another shortcut which is very important is the S key. The S key solos a track. Now you can hear them all playing again. I'll hit the S key again. S for solo, obviously. And while you're in solo mode, you can use the arrow keys to go up and down and solo different tracks. This is the piano track. Solo the bass track again. And this is the drum track. And if you then want to listen to other tracks as well at the same time, then you just have to unmute them. And if you go back to the bass track, the drums are muted again, and the piano track. I hope you've seen how easy it is to move around Cubase without using the, using the mouse all the time, which means that you'll be able to work a lot, lot faster than trying to hit everything with the mouse. In fact, it's even easier to, to use the key keyboard. You can go into Edit and down to the Preferences and into the Key Command section to set up your own key commands. As you can see, you've got a section for all the um, file command, sorry, all the file menu items. You've got a section for all the edit menu items, structure menu. Before we open the VST instruments, which are on the panels menu, here they are. Sorry, well, here they are in the key command section. And as you can see, there is no shortcut for the VST instruments at the moment. In order to create a new shortcut for these, for this, for the VST instruments, all you need to do is to click in this area with the mouse, in the key area, in the same line as the VST instruments. Now you need to press a key on the on the keyboard. You can press keys by themselves or in in combination with Alt or Control or Shift or both Control and Alt at the same time or Shift and Control at the same time. Or shift and alt or all three um, keys together shift control alt and so on if I press a key that's already been used let's say I'll let's say I'll press the um, spacebar assign spacebar to open VST instruments question mark I'll press OK and as you can see this key is already assigned to to the alternate stop key you've got two options you can either overwrite or replace the um, original um, key setting or you can just cancel the operation here and um, press the key key column again and type in a new key I'm going to type in something like um, shift V and I'll see what comes up I press return well you can press return because it'll take it as a new key command so I'll do it again shift V I hit re OK it's already assigned to selection invert. I'll do something else. I'll cancel this one. I'll do shift alt V. It took that one. Alt shift V, that's how it um, comes comes down as. Press apply. You can do any any or any any more, as as many as you like really. Press OK and I'll see whether it worked. Shift Alt V opens up my VST instruments, which is a lot faster than 
doing what we've done before, going up here and um, maybe going down here with a mouse, for example. So all I need to do now is press Shift L V to bring up my VST instruments. And there's another way of um, customizing the way you work with Cubase, and this is by using icons in, in your own personal toolbar. You go into key command again. I'll want to set up an icon for my VST instruments. This is the icon area. I'll show you some of the icons that are already in use, which you'll find in the transport and locator section. Here you'll find icons for rewind, fast forward, stop, start and record. And um, the toolbar looks like this. You go into Windows, Show Toolbar. This is my toolbar at the moment. As you can see, I personally don't really use the toolbar, but some people like to use the toolbar. So I'll show you how to set up your own icons in the toolbar as well. So you go back into VST, sorry, into the Edit menu, Preferences, Key Commands. Let's make up a pattern. Let's create an icon for the VST instruments. Here are the VST instruments. I'll click in the icon area. This menu comes up. And now you can choose any of these symbols um, to represent your VST instruments. And um, I'm spoiled for choice, but let's go with. I'll go with. What can I use? I can't really decide. Let's use the star. I'll hit apply, close the dialog box again and the star is here which is for my VST instruments. So whenever I click the star the VST instruments come up, press star again they come up and another um, thing to show you whether the VST instrument shortcut has worked is if you go down this list again you've got the VST instruments here and you can also see what shortcut I've assigned to, the, to opening the VST instruments panel.